You can also use poles and polars to turn the plane inside out. It would seem that Apollonius himself came up with circle inversion, but it was not developed systematically until the 19th century. Instead of the polar, people usually use its intersection with the diameter containing the pole, shown here in red. You might call it the counter pole. That way, every point outside the circle corresponds to one inside. You can see it as a reflection on a convex spher spherical mirror, such as a dewdrop. You can invert whole figures. Here are some examples. A circle inverts to a circle, but the center shifts. A circle intersecting the inversion circle at right angles is its own inversion. How about inverting a line? Pause if you want to guess the result, or construct it. Here you can see what really happens out there in the distance. The straight line returns into itself. It is an infinitely large circle. The farther out it goes, the closer its inverse curves inward, passing ultimately right through the center of the inversion circle. The broader your expanse, the deeper your interior. Here is the inversion of a rectangular hyperbola The resulting figure is called a lemniscate of Bernoulli, after the mathematician Jacob Bernoulli, not to be confused with the mathematicians Nicolaus Bernoulli, Nicolaus Bernoulli, Daniel Bernoulli, Johann Bernoulli, Johann Bernoulli, nor of course Jacob Bernoulli. This one is a 45-degree hyperbola, that is, the asymptotes form an interior angle of 45 degrees. A zero-degree hyperbola, 135 degrees, 180. Bend it any more in that direction, and you get an upright ellipse. Might as well do that, too, since, as mentioned previously, we stride right through limits. Pause if you want to guess what will happen to the lemnus gate. The ellipse no longer passes through the infinite distance, so the lemnus gate no longer passes through the center, but uncrosses. Let the hyperbola pass through the interior of the circle, and the lemnus gate passes through the exterior. We are now back to using a rectangular hyperbola. Let it pass through the center of the circle, and the lemnus gate passes through the infinite distance, giving, giving you a folium of Descartes. Not only a circle, but any conic can be used for inversion. What does a parabola look like turned inside out? Pause if you want to guess. It's a cardioid.
given a spiral and a circle not crossed by it, the inversion of the spiral in the circle changes direction when the spiral starts looping the circle. Here, inside the circle, is a more complicated figure, a seal designed by Rudolf Steiner. The inversion is by Karl Kemper. Some of the forms we have been generating have names of their own. Their Cartesian equations, as we are told by people who actually know algebra, are as shown here. And that still doesn't allow for rotation and translation. Now you can somehow isolate the x, plug numbers into the resulting functions, as computers do, and laboriously plot out a curve on a grid. But that seems indirect, rather concealing than revealing the dynamic origin of the form. As noted on other occasions, morphological processes engender wonderful metrical properties secondarily. The cardioid is a quartic curve. The folium of Descartes is a cubic. The lemniscate of Bernoulli is a special case of the Cassinian curves, whose distance from two foci has a constant product, again with a quartic Cartesian equation. Wait, does this mean the branches of the hyperbola cross in the infinite distance? No, they don't. They pass through two different infinitely distant points. But you can't see that with this method because all infinitely distant points invert to one and the same point, namely the center of the circle. This is a weakness of using the counterpole instead of the polar. When a point traveling along the hyperbola, or any other figure, passes through the infinite distance, the polar shows where. The polar is at that moment a diameter of the inversion circle, perpendicular to the infinitely distant point. You can invert line-wise figures by treating each line as a polar and constructing the parallel in its pole. The counterpoles align with the center of the inversion conic. This too has an ambiguity. All lines in the center have as their counterpolars one and the same line, namely the infinitely distant line. Still, might as well try a few line-wise inversions. What do you think this hyperbola will get you? That is, if each of its tangents is inverted to a counterpolar, what figure do the counterpolars envelop? Pause if you want to guess. The straight lines are included here to show the method of construction. As the green line rolls around the hyperbola, its red counterpart forms the inverted curve. How about just inverting a circle, tangent by tangent? Do you think you'll get something simple? 
pause if you want to guess. Well, if you aren't going to do the work yourself, you're just going to have to believe whatever you're told. Again, one polar and one counterpolar are included in the picture as a reminder of the method of construction. Want to guess the line-wise inversion of a parabola? This time you even get one free red counterpolar to get you started. If you want to try it, pause now. Hmm. So on line inversion, you score zero out of three. Thus you can invert by counterpole, point for point, you can invert by counterpolar, line for line, or you can invert line for point and point for line, by polarization. When most people talk about, it, about inversion, that is, among the few who even talk about it, they mean inversion by counterpole. That is just another lingering effect of our one-sided focus on the point during the last two millennia and a half, plus the tendency to ignore the infinitely distant. Let's treat this yellow circle as a range of points and invert it with respect to the black inversion circle by polarization. That is, for each point, find the polar. One example is shown here. As the pole cycles through the yellow circle, the polar envelops a shape by rotating as it shifts. That shape is the locus of the polar. Pause if you want to find it on your own. The polar inversion of the yellow circle with respect to the black circle is an ellipse. Is the polar of a circle always an ellipse? Pause if you want to work this one out. Projectively, all conics are the same anyway. Try it the other way around if you like. As the tangent moves around this parabola, what shape will its pole describe? Pause now to guess. A circle. It passes through the center of the inversion circle because the infinitely distant line is a tangent of the parabola, as seen in the installment on conic sections. Now try a pointwise parabola, this time not symmetrical to the inversion circle. Where is the polar going to go? Pause now to guess. It would seem that the polar inversion of a conic is always a conic. Can you come up with a conic that is identical with its own polar inversion? Hint, it depends on its placement with respect to the inversion circle. This hyperbola is its own inversion. It has to lie tangent to the inversion circle at the vertices. Quiz. If you now start from the shape 
enveloped by the pencil of polars, hear red, and treat it as a range of points. Will their polars envelop the same yellow pole curve you started from? Or will you get a new curve? You get the same curve. The polar inversion of curves with respect to a conic is bijective. To understand why, recall the fundamental theorem of pole and polar introduced last time. The pole of any line in a pole lies in the polar, and the polar of any point in a polar lies in the pole. That means if a point moves straight, its polar rotates in a point. If a point moves along a curve, its polar both rotates and shifts. That is why it will envelop a curve. Now as the pole moves along a curve, its momentary direction is the direction of its tangent, shown here in the green range. Therefore, the momentary rotation of its polar is in the pole of that tangent. So the pole of the tangent is the tangent point of the polar of the tangent point. That actually makes sense. What about polarizing a line-wise circle at a line? First, where in fact is the pole of a line with respect to a line? If this black line is the infinitely large inversion circle, its center is the infinitely distant point C. As with a finite inversion circle, the pole will lie on the line through C perpendicular to the line you wish to polarize. Here the green line P. The perpendicular is the infinitely distant line of the plane. It intersects the polar P at its infinitely distant point Q, and it intersects the inversion circle at its infinitely distant point B. Now just complete the infinitely distant harmonic range C, Q, B, P, and P is the pole. We can mark it like this to make the symmetry more evident. With respect to a line then, a line-wise circle is polar to two coinciding infinitely large point-wise circles. Two, because two parallel green polars share the same infinitely distant red pole. If, on the other hand, you convert poles to polars at a line, each point corresponds to a parallel through its pointwise reflection. The polar 
of a pointwise circle is a series of parallels that shift in a circle but do not rotate. They concentrate at the nearest and farthest parallels. Their locus is a degenerate hyperbola whose reverse polarization becomes ambiguous. And any pointwise shape polarized at a line gives you nothing but parallels. Here is a cardioid. You can invert it either by finding the polars of its points or by finding the poles of its lines. The result is the same either way as we have seen. Pause now if you like. Nodes become bitangents. In other words, if a curve passes through the same point twice, its polar inversion passes through the same line twice. Guess what that will look like in polar inversion? Pause now if you like. Inflections become cusps. In other words, whenever a point continues its shift while reversing its spin, its polar continues its spin while reversing its shift. And conversely, whenever a polar continues its shift while reversing its spin, its pole continues its spin while reversing its shift. We can now add to our translator's polarization dictionary. A tangent point becomes a tangent. A node becomes a bitangent. An inflection becomes a cusp, and shift becomes spin, and conversely. Oh, by the way, you can also polarize in space. Point corresponds to plane, plane to point, and line to line, as mentioned in the first installment of this series. Therefore, you can also invert spatial figures. These drawings of polar inversion at a sphere are by Olive Whitcher. If it has 12 corners, its polar inversion will have 12 faces, and so on. How do you capture a lion? Build a circular cage and lock yourself inside. Then perform an inversion with respect to the cage.